Now, my first question is, um, you talk about humanizing the power person, seeing him or her as a mere mortal, and uh, overcoming the fear of that person. What advice would you give to those who need to overcome the fear of the power person, the boss, the judge, the coach, the supervisor, in their lives? First of all, I don't think there's anything about fear that we want to eliminate. Okay. Uh, fear has its purpose. It was given to us uh, as a gen as a, a part a part of the uh, genetic. Uh, system to survive. We run from a danger. We don't stand up and face a gorilla uh, or fight off a grizzly bear. And uh, when we are in danger, we fear permits us to save ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean that when we go into battle, not, I know you're talking not, not talking about battle, but particularly. But when we go into a position, a place of conflict, where there's a power person, uh, we want to keep our fear. Um, if we didn't, uh, if we didn't, if we weren't afraid, there would be something seriously wrong with us. One of the things, one of the methods used, and I use it oftentimes with juries, is just to simply confess it. Uh, now then what kind of power person are you referring to? Um, let's say, for example, uh, a boss, like your boss. Well, if I were talking to my boss, I might say, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, I, I want to talk to you about something, but I have to tell you that I'm afraid. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid to do that. And uh, I wish I were, weren't so afraid, but I want you to know that I am. And, um, and he is going to want to know what I'm afraid of. I'm going to say, well, I, you're the boss. My life, my future is at this business or wherever, whatever it is. Uh, so you might say, uh, um, I, my future is, is uh, dependent upon my job, and I don't want to lose my job, but I do need to talk to you about something. Uh, he is going to, the one or he or she is going to go on and know what it is that I want to talk about and say, well, and then we, with, may I, may I take that risk with you? And, and, uh, and I, the, the boss is going to say, yes, of course, take the risk. And then I would proceed to tell them in a quiet open way of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, my next question is, um, now Mr. Spence, um, arguing outside the courtroom uh, with the wife or in the workplace, we must acknowledge that we can't always be right. But it seems as we get further and further into an argument, even if we realize that what the other party is saying is correct or is a better idea, uh, we care more about not looking wrong or seeming as though we were defeated. What would you say to those who have trouble confessing they were wrong? Well, there's a lot. That you see, the whole business of argument is has to do with telling the truth. Okay. We're talking about fear, that it's true that I'm afraid. And it may be true that I was wrong. And, um, and in my own marriage, I have a, we have a, I have a shortcut with my wife. And then it's, and it, it's sometimes, and more often than 
but I would really like to admit she's right. Um, and the shortcut is to say two words, quote, two words, which means I agree. <laughs> so instead of having to say I agree, it's, it's easier to sometimes say two words, <laughs> which means I do agree. And sometimes the, the two words just as well could even be I'm wrong. And um, there's something incredible about a human being that who can admit that they are wrong. And something very incredible about a person who can never be wrong. One would never trust anybody who was never wrong. And so, because somebody who is never wrong is usually always wrong. Isn't it interesting the dynamic here? Those who admit they are sometimes wrong are more often right. Wow. Excellent. Okay. Uh, my next question is, um, you talk about how essential it is to practice. You say that a great lawyer uh, is not born, he is born of practice. What tips would you recommend to someone who wants to be a better arguer, debater, persuader? What, what practice tips or suggestions would you give them? I used to I used to go down the road when I was a kid, young practice, young trial lawyer, and uh, and uh, set the mirror in such a way that I could see myself as I was driving, and I would I would make my argument that way into the mirror, watching myself. Lord knows who I what kind of dangers I committed on the highway. But, um, I, I, the practice when I go into court going to a jury room strike room when I go before a jury in a court I will have written my entire argument out, word for word. Does that mean that I will read it? No. But it means that in writing out the argument word for word and rewriting it until it's perfect on the written page, that in that process I am I am uh, Feeding the mind with the information that it needs to make the closing argument effectively. I spend hours doing this. People will see me get up in a courtroom and begin to 